are you doing today? Hello. Uh, good. How's your morning going? Welcome to the pickup. Stab and Man's occasional variety show on location. A week of surf, skate, BMX, music, and so much more here in Huntington Beach. Today we're at the iconic Sugar Shock, just 807 feet from the famous HB Pier. I'm Corey Stevens, and with me are my lovely co-hosts, Harry Bryant and Dylan Graves. You'll recognize Harry from past seasons of the pickup, as well as his past life as a rugby player who actually died in 1967. Harry, how does it feel to be alive and well and reincarnated here in Huntington Beach for the Vans US Open? I knew it. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something <laughs> special about you. <laughs> yeah. Dylan, you're originally from Puerto Rico and have spent a lot of time here in California, but you recently migrated to Australia. Is it something we said? So I just had to... I kidnapped him. <laughs> I had to be closer to Harry. Yeah. He was too far <laughs> away over there. I got him out of here. All right, in today's episode, Mikey Saramella is back in his beloved bunker to offer his surgical analysis of this year's Vans US Open. We break down the science behind the infamous Huntington Hop, and legendary skater, artist, and photographer Ed Templeton will give us a true locals tour of HB. And finally, we'll see the weird things Tanner Gadowskis has been hoarding in his garage. But before we get to all of that, let's catch up on the latest news and gossip that's been floating around HB. News! News. Just days prior to the start of the Vans US Open, a small plane crashed into the water just off of Huntington Beach. Incredibly, the pilot was rescued by local junior lifeguards and suffered only minor injuries. He seemed a bit weird when we were taken off from Sydney, but I couldn't believe that's where he parked <laughs> that plane. That he was like chilling on the plane when they found him, right? Like he was just hanging out like on top of the plane. Captain always goes down with the ship. <laughs> well, kind of. <in> and this. <laughs> Kelly Slater actually tweeted about the incident saying, damn, no more flying billboards for the event. If Kelly had a billboard, what do you think it would have said? The, what does the goat want to promote? The goat promote? <laughs> <laughs> Surprised he didn't strap like a Slater designs. Like that would have been a sick like, yeah. banner. Just a board. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most anticipated things leading into any event is the forecast. Currently, there's a hurricane off the coast of Mexico headed north, which should bring quality waves in the coming days. For the conditions at the opening of the event, let's go live to our HB surf reporter. Not good. I think that's what they live for here. Like, you know, having a set window, you just come into it with like, hell yeah, let's get our hop on. Fresh off of a trip to Tahiti, Katie Simmers is back this year to defend her US Open title. Katie won last year at the age of 15, just 31 days shy of Malia and Manuel's record of being the youngest US Open champion ever. Malia was only 14 years old when she won in 2008. Wow, really? Yeah. That's crazy, 14? Right? She just smashed this thing? She's out here nunchucking. The 14, <laughs> damn. Ninja thing. <laughs> Last year's men's division winner, Griffin Cole Pinto, on the other hand, will not be back to defend his title. Griffin is currently placed fifth on the championship tour and is in contention for the world title and has just flown from California to Tahiti early to prepare for the upcoming event there. Makes sense. He will be missed. If for you're sure. training for Chopes, you're not surfing HB this way. But I guess, yeah, with a greater goal, it's Chopu. Tihapu. Tihapu, it's understandable. Yeah. Now let's get to know the culture of HB through the lens of a local icon, Ed Templeton. Dang it. Door's locked. My name is Ed Templeton, retired professional skateboarder. I run a company called Toy Machine Skateboards. Toy Machine Blood Sucking Skateboard Company, to be exact. And I do painting and photography and all sorts of other stuff. So I was always a Southern California kid. Any kid who grew up in Huntington Beach essentially found skateboarding or surfing, it felt like. <laughs> it's funny, I think at the core, surfers and skaters are very similar. Both of them are like a similar pursuit as far as it's relatively individualistic and based on style a lot. It's like one of those things that you can't judge necessarily. I mean, sure, there's like technically great surfers, but there's other guys who never place in any contest, but you'd rather watch them a thousand times over the best guy kind of, th I mean, that's the same thing in skating as it is in surfing. So we would like just skate on the bike path there under the pier and people would like watch on the pier and throw quarters down at us. It almost became like street performing. We would literally like ask people like, hey, you girls and like you guys like lay down on the, on the asphalt and we're gonna ollie over you. 
I mean, we'd like ollie over five people in a row or something like that. And like I have a photo in one of the news, like the register, the local paper here. The headline is like, Board of Summer, spelled board like, like a skateboard. So that's just a weird history connection like to the fact like I just spent like way more time than most humans ever should at the Huntington Beach Pier. I love you more than these people love you. They're all wanting you to go to hell. The mystique of the pier for me was always interesting, like the fact that there's this thing that just like a sidewalk that goes out over the ocean and you can have that experience with a whale or it's just like a nice place. Like, you know, on, on, a, on a very basic level, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to walk out over the ocean and use that spot as my walking place <laughs> and shoot some photos and hang out there. So that, that was the real reason. And then it's, especially like the US Open was just, you know, culture on steroids. And it was always just fun. It's just people watching to the craziest degree, you know? Like there's always something happening down there. So it's like kind of a good spot. Mm -hmm.